my name is Lara, and I did JERF as a student in 2015, and then came back every year since then as staff and faculty. And I'm also a ski instructor and coach ski racing up here in Lake Tahoe. And today I just wanted to talk to you about ski boots and what to look for in your ski boot, how to make sure it fits, and some adjustments that we can make to really maximize our ski boots on the ice field. They're such an important tool. We're in our ski boots almost every single day, and we really want them to fit well. Um, it can be really a huge pain and cause a lot of blister problems if we have ski boots that aren't fitting properly. But luckily, there's also a lot that we can do to adjust the fit of a ski boot. So, and I know a lot of you might not have skied before, and this is awesome. We have a lot of people who learn how to ski on the ice field, and I'm sure you're gonna do great. And even if you have skied before, the system is pretty different than anything that you might have used, so hopefully you get something out of this video. So, to start off with, um, this is my Alpine ski boot. It's a downhill boot, kind of heavy, has four buckles, and this is um, something that's really awesome for resort skiing, but definitely not something that we would want for the ice field. So if you see anything that looks like this online, don't buy it. The second boot we have is an Alpine Touring boot. It's a very light, also has four buckles, but you might see some of them with three or even two buckles. Um, and they're a great boot. Um, if you have done a lot of touring before and you think you might want to use this kind of setup on the ice field if you already have it, um, definitely talk to a staff member or Annie Boucher and she can give you approval for that. Um, I do a lot of Alpine touring, but I still prefer the setup that I'm going to show you next. Um, the, we do so much flat skiing on the ice field, it's just a lot more efficient to have a telly boot with a three pin binding. But this can be a great boot for you if you already do a lot of alpine touring. So something to keep in mind. And then this is the boot that I bring on the ice field. It's a low boot, only has two buckles, super simple. Um, you can see that it has these bellows here to add a little bit of flex when you're walking. And then if we look here, there's these three pinholes, and this is how the boot actually attaches to the binding. So we're going to use a metal binding, has three pins which stick up, and a metal latch which closes down on the boot, and then you're good to go. So really simple boot. You can also see that it's pretty beat up. Um, this is from, I don't know, four or five summers on the ice field, and we do do a lot of walking across rocks and things like that. So the boots do get pretty beat up. So maybe you don't bring your favorite alpine touring boots to the ice field because they will get a little bit thrashed. Okay, so the best way to find a boot that fits is really to go into a ski shop and have a professional help you. But I know that that's not possible for everyone. So we're just gonna talk about some things that we can do to make sure that our boots fit before we get to the ice field. So the first thing we wanna know is actually what size boot are we looking for. And ski boots are measured in something called Mondo, which is just length in centimeters. So I have my ruler here in this little piece of post-it note, so I know exactly where the end is. And just like when you were a little kid at Payless, you're gonna put your foot here, make sure it's lined up well, and then step down on it and see where your foot measures. And I measure at about exactly a 25 centimeter. So when I'm looking for boots online or in a shop, I'm gonna look for a 25.0 Mondo size. And actually these boots are a 24.5, and so are my Alpine skiing boots. They're a 24.5. I just like my boots a little bit smaller, so you'll definitely want to try on lots of different pairs. So let's say that you make it to the ski shop and you're trying on boots, everything's going well, you find a pair that's in your Mondo size. The first thing you're actually gonna wanna do is look at the pinholes and make sure that they're not damaged. We want them to be nice and round um, and there's no like cuts or dents or things like that because that'll really affect um, how the binding works with your ski boot. If that looks good, the second thing we're gonna do is actually take the liner out of the shell of the ski boot. So every ski boot has a shell and a liner. The shell is the plastic part. And the liner is this kind of soft part that looks a little bit like a shoe. And you can see on these um, liners, they actually even have 
holes where you could put laces if you wanted. I don't really like skiing with them with laces, but some people do, and it can be a nice way to adjust the fit of, of the liner if you want that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is actually take our foot and put it in the plastic liner. And what I'm gonna do is slide my foot all the way up so that my toes are just gently touching the front of the liner. And then I'm gonna bend down and I'm gonna see if I can fit my two fingers behind my heel. And yeah, so I have about two fingers like this and it's just a little bit more space than that. And so that's just gonna give me an idea of how well the shell is fitting my foot. Um, if you have less than two fingers by a lot, um, it might mean that that shell isn't gonna work for you. And if you have way more than two fingers, it's definitely gonna be too big. And a boot that's too big is almost as bad, maybe worse than a boot that's too small. And then what I'm gonna do is slide my foot so that my heel is touching the back. And I'm just gonna move my toes side to side, keeping my, keeping my heel in place. And I'm just trying to see how much space there is in the width of the boot. I have a pretty narrow foot. And so for me, having only a little bit of play, like about that much side to side, is enough for me. Um, but so something just about like this. But if you have a wider foot, you're gonna want a little bit more space. So this is just giving me an idea of how much space is in the shell. So if you do that test and you still think that that boot will work for you, awesome. Go ahead and put the liner back in the boot. And then you're ready to try it on. But first we have to talk about socks. <laughs> And socks are such a personal preference thing. I have a lot of options here to show you. I think I might actually be missing one, but maybe not. So for me, I like a really thin sock when I ski. So on the ice field, I might wear something like this. Um, it's a little bit shorter, but that's fine. I have short boots. And then it's pretty thin. So that's what I like. We also have people who wear pretty thick wool socks. So something a little bit more like this, which is a little bit thicker and fluffier. So this will be obviously taking up more space in your ski boot than these little guys. And then we even have people who like to double up socks and they'll actually wear like a tiny little silk liner underneath an outer sock like this. This can be really awesome for you. People say that it helps them prevent blisters and things like this. So whatever works, maybe you already do a lot of hiking and you know what kind of socks you like to wear, awesome. But you just wanna make sure that you're trying on your boots with whatever socks you normally use. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this sock on. <coughs> okay. So, trying our ski boot on for the first time. Cool. So I put the boot on. <laughs> We're not done yet. I'm gonna take my heel and kick my foot against the ground pretty forcefully. This is gonna pull my foot back into the heel pocket of the boot. Okay, now I'm gonna buckle the boots snugly, but not too tight. Um, when I'm in my ski touring mode, I'm gonna want the buckles to be really loose, like maybe not even buckled at all, because I wanna have lots of range of motion for my leg and my calf to swell a little bit as I'm walking. But when I'm skiing, I want them a little bit more tightened down. So I'm gonna have them like that for right now. And we wanna just double check that all the plastic bits are overlapping in the way that they're supposed to. Um, so this bit on these boots goes on top, and then we have the tongue which is underneath both of those outside plastic bits. Then I'm gonna stand up, feels pretty good. The first thing I'm gonna do is stand straight up in my boots, open my ankle joint, and I should feel my toes just barely touching the front of the boot, which I feel in these boots, which I guess is why they work for me. So I'm not jamming my toes in the front, but they're really just barely touching the front of the boot. And if you can't feel your toes touching the front of the boot, 
likely they're too big for you. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and flex into the boot. I'm closing my ankle joint and my knee and my hip joint, and I should feel my heel slide back into the heel pocket of the boot. And now I no longer feel the front of the boot. I might feel it a tiny bit with my like pinky toe and whatever the toe is next to your pinky toe, but just a little bit. So again, when I stand straight up, my heel comes forward. I feel the front of the boot. It's not jamming. It's just touching. Flex. My heel slides back and I have a little bit more space. What I'm looking for in the fit of my boot, it's not a slipper and it's not a running shoe, right? Something totally different. And it might not be something that you've felt before, but they should fit snugly and not be so loose that your foot is flopping around. This can really cause a lot of problems and also not be so tight that it's pinching anywhere. And so, especially with these Scarpa boots, um, these are called a T4 model. They're a really great boot, but they do have um, quite a narrow heel pocket in the liner. Let me see if I can pull this one out and I can show you how that looks. Um, so this can cause some blisters for some people. Um, so that might be something you want to be aware of. So the heel pocket starts right here. And yeah, if you put your hand in there, you can feel kind of a bump on either side where the heel pocket is. And if the boots aren't fitting well, you will definitely get a lot of blisters right in here. Um, and we see that every year with people who've never put their ski boots on until they get on the ice and then they have a lot of blister problems. Um, let me think if there's anything else in terms of the fit of the boot before you buy it. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Looking for a boot that fits snugly, not too big, and is not pinching you anywhere. And these nice, low, simple boots are really the ones I like on the ice field. But there's tons of different styles that um, I'll put some links to in the vi video notes as well. Okay, once you've bought your boot, congrats, great job. Um, if you've bought a new ski boot, a lot of the soft liners of the boots are actually heat moldable, which is awesome. So you can actually mold the liner of the boot to your actual foot. This is obviously something that's best done by a professional, but it is also something that you can do at home. If you watch some YouTube videos, if you want a little bit more advice about this, you can let me know and I can try to help you. Um, but basically you heat this soft part up in the oven, not too hot so that you melt it or something and then you put little pads on any spots that you think might cause you problems with blisters and then you take the boots out of the oven put your foot in it and stand there for 15 minutes while the boot cools off and it molds to your to your foot okay um the next really important part about ski boots is the footbed. So um, I was talking to a boot fitter the other day and um, he told me that most ski boots, actually most shoes, come with a disposable footbed. And so this is true of your running shoes, your soccer shoes, your badminton shoes, whatever, including ski boots. This thing is so flimsy. It has nothing that resembles the shape of the human foot. It's just flat and it's really trash. I mean, it, it just is. There's no way that this gives you any support um, for all of the miles that we're gonna be skiing on the ice field. So really I say, take this out, never look at it again. And what you really want is a footbed that resembles something like these ones. So we have a lot of different levels of, maybe not quality, but of, of stiffness. So this one's a little bit softer and has like a gel base to it. And you can see that the arch is folding down a little bit when I push on it. So it's a little bit flimsier. If you have no problems with your feet, you've never had a problem with your hiking boots, you can just wear shoes out of the box. Maybe this is something you would like to invest in. Um, these are pretty inexpensive. You can get them at the drugstore, wherever, something like that. Um, and then the next thing we have are these super feets. Now uh, this one's not a super feet, super foot model, um, but it's also pretty stiff in the arch, um, but a little flimsier in the toe. 
and has kind of a nice heel pocket. So that's kind of nice. But the super feet, they're the ones I like to use in my ski boots, um, in my touring boots. And you can see they have a nice stiff arch support here. There's actually plastic underneath that's giving you that support. And then a really deep heel pocket. And when we're skiing and touring, this deep heel pocket is really what we're looking for in our ski boots. We don't want our heels to be moving around a bunch. We want it to be kind of locked in in the back of the boot. So this is what I'm looking for here. And then, yeah, when I go to flex it, it's not too flexy. Really nice and, and rigid. And this is just another model. A um, little bit flexier in the toe. Still with that deep heel pocket. And a lot of nice arch support. So yeah, you can buy super feet at the grocery, or not maybe not the grocery store, but at CVS or any kind of pharmacy, uh, sporting goods store. They're a really good investment, and I highly, highly recommend that you do this with your ski boots. Um, it will make it so much more comfortable for you to cross the ice field in these ski boots if you're able to have them a little bit more well customized to you. And yeah, you'll just be so much more comfortable. The other thing I super strongly recommend is wearing your ski boots around the house for a few days well in advance of coming to Alaska. This will give you an idea if you have any kind of hot spots or blisters areas that might be a problem for you. And then you can either take them into a professional ski shop or a boot fitter where you live, or you can already come into us with an idea of what might cause a problem for you and we can fix it before we ever get up on the ice field. So please, please, please try your boots on. Um, use these tips, tricks that we just talked about to help you make them fit a little bit better. Um, and yeah, keep messing around with it. Just because they're not feeling comfortable on day one doesn't mean that you're stuck with them. There's so many adjustments that we can make and we can keep them tighter, looser, add laces if you can, do the heat molding, um, change your inserts, change your socks, all sorts of different stuff. You definitely don't have to suffer through uh, a painful summer. And hopefully we'll be able to get you guys all out and skiing in your new ski boots. And if you, again, if you have any more questions, go ahead and let me know by email. And I hope to see you all soon. Thanks so much.